I'm Paul Herbert. I'm mainly occupied with alternative fuels, mainly methanol, where I have the role as global technology lead in LR. Methanol is a fuel that is gaining increased interest in the industry because of its characteristics. It's not quite as technically demanding as hydrogen or LNG or ammonia in the form of storage, so that gives an advantage. There are some disadvantages, of course. Yeah, well actually, currently there is no consolidated solution available to replace the direct requirements of the rules, either the low flashpoint fuel rules part A1 section 11 or 5, that is the requirements for fire safety regulations and also for the strength requirements and the collision protection requirements. But the pragmatism of the risk-based certification process does allow for alternative solutions to be proposed by clients and this of course is pending uh, the scrutiny of the risk-based certification process and also the requirements of part a of the low flashpoint fuel rule section 2.3 which provides means of proposing alternative solutions based on demonstration of equivalent safety levels on the completion of the risk assessment process lr may well consider the equivalent solution viable for installation on the vessel but of course this is pending the findings and scrutiny of the risk-based certification process. Well we find you know through the completion of a number of risk assessment processes or feasibility studies you know up to now the most challenging aspect is uh, actually uh, finding space on board ships to store methanol and the reason for this is because of the net calorific value of methanol being only half of what it is for conventional heavy fuels this means that fuel storage is going to take up approximately two times the volume as what it would if it was a conventional fuel to provide the same propulsion of the ship that is uh, by far the most challenging problem for clients. What we see and what is appropriate is that hull integral tanks are being converted in order to contain methanol and this implies corrosion protection and strengthening of welds etc in order to make them suitable for the methanol characteristics. Type A, B and C tanks are not so often used if at all because the technical requirements to storage of methanol aren't the same as for example LNG or liquid hydrogen ammonia. Clients do have a possibility to propose storage in independent tanks or portable tanks but it still really is the most viable op option to convert or purpose build hull integral tanks and treat them with the correct coating and the correct welding materials. So I would say absolutely that hull integral tank storage is the used option. Yeah, I mean, uh, methanol is generally produced from non-sustainable means, but it can also be produced by sustainable means, meaning produced in a manner that doesn't emit harmful gases to the atmosphere. For example, biomethanol, which is produced on the basis of uh, sustainable byproducts, it could be biomass livestock from the forestry industry, etc. Or it could be by means of what we call e-methanol, which is produced on the basis of hydrogen, emitting no dangerous ca gases to the atmosphere and thus providing sustainable methanol solution. So, you know, sustainable methanol in the marine industry is absolutely a viable option and I think will provide a solution in the future for decarbonisation. I think basically we're seeing a vast array of different vessels proposed to use methanol as fuel 
for example, going back to the first vessel that was classed in Lloyd's Register, the Stina Germanica, as a passenger ferry, which has been operating since 2015 on methanol as fuel, a retrofit. We're also having inquiries for container ships, passenger cruise ships, offshore supply vessels, row-row cargo vessels, both retrofits and new builds. So uh, there is generally a large interest uh, amongst clients for this particular fuel methanol. I think, you know, with the development of sustainable methanol and the supply chain being uh, reliable, I think that this is a an exciting solution for the future in order to meet the decarbonisation goals that we are striving to meet. And um, I think, you know, LR has methanol rules developed. We are gaining experience on assessing the risk-based uh, associations with this particular fuel. So. I think we're well equipped to provide service to the clients going forward and uh, it's my, my impression that we are providing the clients with a uh, process methodology which they can have confidence in.